Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Jerry, and we're going to start turning this box into the control center for this carriage uh, power feed and the carriage up down. I used to use this old DeWalt box. You can see it's a lot shorter in depth than this one, and I had a hard time getting all my controls in here. Um, the height, you know, the, the surface area isn't much. In fact, it's probably about the same, maybe just a little bit bigger on the new box. So this is a Harbor Freight Apache box. That's their brand. This is Apache right on it. I think it's about 40 bucks. So I'm going to drill some holes. Now what I have now in here, I have this piece of plastic in here. This will be the control cover. This is just a cover for one of those plastic totes you use for clothing and so forth. So that will have something along the lines of, this was the cover for the other box. Now I'm thinking, I'm not gonna put a limit switch on the up down for right now. I'm gonna try it without it because I, you're, you can see the scale and it doesn't go so fast that I'm gonna go blow right by it. And when you're lifting it, you're going to be with the controls. Whereas when I send the carriage home, often I'm carrying a board off or something along the lines of that. So the limit switches, I think, are a necessity for the carriage forward and back, but not maybe up and down. So I'm going to try it without it up and down first. And if I have to, I'll put the same limit switches on. So step one, let's drill these holes. Right. Yeah. Right through the warning sign. This this will probably be mounted on the mill. So I'm going to bring the power into these bus bars instead of trying to splice them all together with uh, wire nuts.
All right, let me show you what's happening here. So I'm gonna power it, power the whole unit on. My battery's down on, on the carriage. Everything appears to be working. So let's start with the, uh, aut the auto feed. Um, on the on the mill moving back and forth so let's go this way as coming back towards me obviously that's full speed i have limit switches at the end so let's send it back let's send it halfway to you guys let's go forward now So I get through the log, stop it. I'm gonna raise up the head. I'm over the log, I'm gonna send her home. So we'll send her home, we'll lower it now to our next cut. Now I'm gonna either have to get up and read the scale or put a DRO on this and put the uh, a digital readout and put my numbers over here. So I'd have to get up and read the scale. Man, that might be, well I might be sitting maybe on like a bar stool a little bit higher and right alongside it at the end. So we're down to our depth and now let's go cut our log. Obviously we wouldn't cut that fast. The auto feed is only using 2.87 amps, so I'm going to be able to uh, see as my blade gets dull, possibly. All right, so we get through the we get through the log. We're going to raise it up. We clear the log and we send her home to get ready for the next cut. All right, I have a fuse in here. This will be a 20 amp fuse. Uh, right now I just have a 30 amp fuse because that's all I have laying around. Um, this is the power on switch for everything. Pulse switch modulator is on. This is my up down for the carriage. Um, I have this darn thing spun around backwards so I'm gonna have to pull it down to go up. You know, I thought about turning it, but the wires are pretty thick. And this is a double pull, double throw switch rated for 30 amps, 100,000 cycles. I didn't run the up down motor through the pulse width uh, modulation control unit. I, I can keep up with that really good. I can hit the numbers right on. So this is up. <laughs> That's down. So it's, it's not so fast that I can't stop it where I need to. This will be my throttle. Now, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I smoked my actuator. I thought my linear actuator was rated for 12 to 24 volts, like my motors are, my pulse width modulator, and my amp meter, and everything else is. It wasn't, it's only rated for 12, and I smoked it. So I have another one coming, it might be here today, but all the wiring's ready to go. All I gotta do is hook it up to that. So how am I gonna com uh, combat that? Well, first let me explain. I have 24 volts coming back to this unit. I have a transformer I'll show you in a minute on the mill. From the battery, it goes to the transformer, steps it up from 12 volts to 24 volts. I send it down some number 12 wire, and I have a little junction box. So I'm gonna to try to show you what I have in here in a second. All right, next, this is the auto feed for the carriage going back and forth. Um, this is for, let's turn it on. I'll get all this hooked on so you can see it eventually. And tighten up all the screws. All right, so we're at 36% now. 24.18 uh, volts, power 0.4 watts. So we're gonna bring her all the way home. That's coming home. And that's cutting the log. 
Why did I go 24 volts? I went 24 volts because it returns a lot faster and the motors are a little bit more powerful. Um, so I have a transformer, another, a step down transformer now coming. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to open this and show you inside, but I have a step down transformer coming to bring it back down to, from 24 to 12 volts. I'll put it underneath here. This will be the switch for the throttle. It's another double pull, double throw switch. Again, this one is just like the up down switch here. It's a double pull, double throw. I'm using it for uh, polarity reversing. So all you gotta do is hook the last two wires up to the transformer and it is done. All right, guys, it's been one of them days. This video will come out tomorrow. Uh, we got about six or eight inches of snow today. Another snow day. It's March 12th, 13th, 14th, something like that, Monday. Um, but a couple things, 12 volt, the 24 volt transformer right here. I have two pairs head from each motor back to the controller, two pairs from the throttle to the controller. Uh, two pairs for each limit switch to the controller. So we have a total of four cables here. I'm going to give you the cost of everything in, the, in another video. I'm not going to give you the electronics cost because electronics cost can vary depending on what you use. There's lots of different ways to use this um, as, as opposed to the, as well as the wire. Um, you could choose to leave it at a station like I'm thinking about doing, or you can choose to keep it on a station. And if I do that, I will shorten these wires up and rebuild the box. A um, couple of things I would do different if I did this again. I probably wouldn't use one inch. I'd probably use three quarter inch. Uh, I think these were $110, $120 a piece. These are stainless. Also, I don't think I'd use stainless. There was a guy in a forum, and I mentioned his name in uh, video number one who built something very similar to this design. And I started seeing this design quite a while ago on somebody else's mill. And then I saw it on Delco Dave's. If you haven't followed him, I follow him on Instagram. And uh, I think he has a YouTube channel as well. And he used 5 eighths, and his mill's a lot bigger than this. It's a homemade mill. The problem he was getting with it, though, because it's so long, his goes up so high, he'd get vibration in his. And he, did a, he had a cool little trick to fix that. So I'd probably go to three quarter inch if I did this again. Um, and probably, I don't know if I'd use stainless. So that would cut the cost way down. Um, I wouldn't use four bolt pillow block bearings. I would use all two bolt pillow block bearings. These four bolt pillow block bearings. One, I needed some more room that I didn't have because some of these bolts went through and they split a piece of steel just right down the edge. Um, I wouldn't, I could have used two bolt here, two bolt there, just like the two bolts I used inside or down below. I used two bolt pillow block bearings there and two bolt pillow block bearings inside. Um, it's working good right now. I'm really happy with it. So we'll see how, how it holds up. I suspect the mechanical part will hold up well. You know, I'm going to have my occasional loose wire or something like that. But this time I soldered all my wires, but I did buy a couple of switches that are rated for 100,000 duty cycle, 30 amps. Um, so hopefully that the, will hold out. That's it, guys. This was a fun build. So hopefully you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I won't be selling this. I, I'll help you if you got some questions on it. I'm not going to sell any of it. Um, it's a very simple design. Let me show you the mechanics one more time. These are what I'm referring to, these four blocks, or four bolt pillow block bearings. I would have switched all those to two. Kind of like those two right there. That one over there. So like I said, this will all get cleaned up, wiring loom, zip tied, and everything will be cleaned up. So guys, that will do it. Take care. We'll see you at the mill next time. Done. Well, almost.